Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome along to the Studio Rats Q&A Live, number 193, as he gets his breath back from spinning his chair. It's for me to announce, my name's James Ivey. Oh, I'm Paul Drew, I've got itchy eye. And, and hang on a second, there's something wrong. What's wrong? There we go, that's better, that's far Wait. better. It's far more like it. It's like say, he does like a couple of videos, he does a couple of videos a year, and then he, he, he thinks he's in charge. <clears throat> unbelievable yeah how very dare you you are all very welcome along to our weekly dust up on the interwebs where we attempt to put the musical technical and everything else world to rights and fail miserably uh -huh. yeah. uh, however mr drew it should always start this way and it traditionally does what have you been up to uh i've been what have i been doing i've been playing with that new freeman amp right it's nice. Oh, it? can I show? Can I show? I've got it in the rack. Can I? Can I? Can I show? Yeah. It's, hold on. I managed to get it in the rack. So I've got the. Oh, look at that! Look. So it's a rack of. It's the rack of doom. The rack of doom. I've been having lots of fun with that. Hold on. Where's my? Where's, where's my camp? Hold on. Oh no, that's not oh, right. The chin. I don't mind it. Anyway, um, that uh three three five the katana go came out. That's cool. That's really good, that thing. Uh, can I go? Uh, there's a couple of products. There's a product. When's that? God, no, there's a couple of products next week. So I've been, right. been working on that. And, um, yeah, there's a video coming out tomorrow on the 335 that we did. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it's all good. What about yourself? Uh, what have I been up to? Yeah. So... Cheering at the weekend, as is always the way. Um, I got the what we thought was going to be a quite poorly and could have been my first real pup from the auctions back the um dual rectifier. Uh, with a bit of research, well, it could have been a yeah. pup because it? it was playing up. Oh, yeah, it was playing up, wasn't it? Got it back from yours, did a bit of research, looked at the fuse that was in it looked at the fuse that should be in it and went, that's why we were having problems. But but then but it shouldn't be blowing fuses anyway. Well what if it if it's right if it if it wants a, a four milliamp fuse and it's getting a 1.4 milliamp fuse, yes it will. Okay. Um so anyway we also blew up it, uh, uh, so, so we blew up an amp didn't we? Did we uh, did we talk about that last week? Uh we no because I hadn't been to yours at that point. No, did we? Oh, I was at yours last week. <laughs> yeah, you were at mine last week. So, um, yeah, I've, we've got a video of us blowing up the fifty-one fifty. Maybe we should <laughs> we, we should try and do some sort of. Oh, I'll do I'll do a short of that. I think. I think I'll we do should do it because, because, quite frankly, I'll be honest. I had way more of a fight with returning that than I thought I should have. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll, we'll talk about all this sort of stuff a bit later on about sort yeah. of the state of the um, state yeah. of the gear market. But the but the um, dual rectifier is repaired. Uh, well, the, the fuse has been changed, and it sounds monstrous. Are you keeping it? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, the truth to be told, I think I would use it. A similar amount to the Friedman, which is why the Vox is going. Oh, the yeah. old one. That makes no sense. So you've got a dual rectifier. You'll think you'll use it the same amount as you'd use a Friedman. Yeah. So you're selling a Vox. Yeah. That I haven't no I haven't switched the Vox on since you were here and we did the captures. Oh, yeah, but a Vox is a different sort of thing, though. It's a different I beastie. I know. But I've got the Voxy sort of tones in the Chandler. I'm still not sure. I mean, uh, what, I I'd, like that, do what I'd like to do is keep them all. Because I just way prefer, But I way prefer your box to that Chandler. Really? Way, way prefer that box to the Chandler. Mm. Okay, interesting. Um, but yeah, so there's a few things on eBay at the minute. There's a few things that have gone. The thingy's gone. The Fender Supersonic has gone. Uh, oh, you sold yeah. that, have you? Yeah, I have. Oh, that was not. I like that. <laughs> I know, but it's not rare enough to. It, it was. 
It made a funny smell. Listen, well, you do. Hey, in, <laughs> um, in all fairness, in all fairness, um, <laughs> it, there were loads of comments on the Supersonic. Everyone's saying that it is, it's a bit of a... It's got a few issues. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so maybe, maybe you know, maybe you maybe did the right thing. Yeah, yeah, and I read a lot of those comments. People saying it's not the most stable amp in the world. Maybe you got a good one. I'm like, right, I might ship this on, and so I yeah, did. yeah. Um, but then yeah, but then yeah, and then you went and bought a Mesabuga dual rectifier, which no no engineer in his right mind wants to go anywhere near. No amp repair, but but I think I, I mean, give, give me a couple of weeks with it. It'll probably go. I, I think you need. To, I, the, I one think need to, the one that's not going is the Friedman. The Friedman is a keeper. That's a yeah. Amp. I think I, I think you need to sell the dual rectifier. But um, yeah, it's only yeah, it's only because it's such a dated sound. It's such a it's such a it's such a thing. It's great. It, it's great at what it does. But guess what? I've what? captured it, and a capture pack is available on our website. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great if that's what you want, you, you know. But that's the thing. So maybe the people that would want that mm. are the people that lusted after a, a dual rectifier, you know, when in the nineties, mm. in the nineties and two thousands, and then, and then, you know, would you buy a hundred watt amp now? Most people wouldn't, and we'll talk about that later on. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, you know, it's a great way of having that tone if that's what you always wanted. It's great. But the other thing I've been up to this week is after on Monday. Uh, my Sparky said, I can come, I can fit you on Tuesday to finish the kitchen and that right. area. Uh, so I had to move muscle and tail and stuff to get the, the kitchen y bit finished and the roof finished and stuff. And it is, and I'm in, and there's a coffee machine in there and everything, and it's nice. lovely. Nice. So I've just about to order myself a fridge to go in there, and then I'll have. Um, drinks and coffee machine and stuff so i'll be a little bit more independent from the house so when we have breaks and stuff there won't be any need to go and pester the trouble and strife and the children and stuff when it's holidays and things and then the next no. stage is uh the wc as they say in france uh, ah yes a latrine latrine <laughs> um yeah so should we get on with some questions and stuff Yes, Let's do and that. some salutations and all that. Boom, Chris he says, Evening, all evening, Chris. Cue all the Katana Go questions. Yeah, yeah, give them if you need. If you need, if if you want any questions about the Katana Go, I can answer some. So, um, as much as I know, I will tell thee. Brilliant little thing, really cool. Nabs, he says, evening rats and all, great demos this week. Hope something exciting coming up soon. Cheers, cheers, Nabs. Was that um have you got something exciting or you hope there is a, there is something exciting coming? I think he so hopes always, exciting. Yeah, there's always exciting stuff coming in. I'll show you what I've been, on... I'll show you what I've been playing with this week in a minute. It's say not necessarily oh, guitar friendly, but you know. Um have yeah. you heard uh, did, uh, did you hear it was the first um formal charge of 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 and um, someone went to prison for for the first time for doing that showing what they were playing with on the internet <laughs> now apparently apparently someone went to prison they got the, the the first conviction of someone actually going to prison over it wow anyway, yes don't don't show what you've been playing with this week quite what i meant but <laughs> oh okay oh, i didn't know what we meant <laughs> Send up a wheelchair pillow. Hey guys, uh, remodel hit to hiccup. Soundproof room contractor got in a fist fight with the tile guy. <laughs> oh God, is there such a thing as a decent contractor? I always have problems with. No, I don't, I don't think there is. on track though. Fingers crossed. I hate to say it. I I really don't think there is. I, okay, my Sparky. I w I've said to Paul how much he charged me for the whole project, and I think he's brilliant. Um, yeah. He is worth his weight in gold. If if anyone else is in this area, because he does work for himself and he will travel a bit, who wants electrical work done, I would I would send Matt your way in a heartbeat. The awesome. rest of them have been a right pain in the you know where. Quite frankly, yeah. I need. A, I, I'm looking for a good builder around here. So if anyone is in the Essex area, <laughs> I won't hold my breath. Davros Halfbeard. Evening, chaps, and hope everyone is well. And you, Davros. 
Sent, he says, Paul, love the look of your studio. Wondering if that couch gets much use though, or is it mostly for show? No, no, it's it's um it's sofa bed. So um it's I, I use it as a um if someone comes over to stay and the other rooms upstairs are being used, it's it mainly gets used by um friends' kids, to be honest. It's, it normally ends up as their bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, uh, mine's a sofa bed as well. As have you stayed on it? Mm. Most uncomfortable thing I've ever slept on in my life. That is, <laughs> I think it's really Kurt liked it. Kurt's and much shorter than me. Kurt liked it, and Jen's mum liked it, both of whom are significantly shorter than you. So, hopefully, not at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and was I there as well? Moving swiftly on, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff Cook, good morning from Brisbane. A bit sunny, a bit rainy, but I'm not complaining yet. Hope everyone's well. Yes, we're coming into our spring. I, oh, I always get jealous. I always get jealous in, in autumn when when we get our um, Antipodean friends and they say, oh, just coming into spring. And I'm like, oh, oh God. Yeah, it's just starting to turn yeah. now, isn't it? It's just starting to get nice. Yeah. Gary, he says, good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing just fine to you, Gary. Keeps, good morning and happy birthday from old time Pro Tools expert viewer from New Zealand. Wow, God, they were the days, weren't they? Because you, yeah, you were, you were as well, weren't you, for a while? Pro Tools expert. Well, I wasn't Pro Tools expert. I was. I did. You were Studio One stuff. Yeah, but you were. You were still part of. Yeah, yeah, you did for a while. I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah. Lee says, hello, mate. He says, I get that freedom warmed up for tomorrow, Mr. D. It will be. It will be all nicely toasty. Toasty when you get here, mate. Nice. That thing is so good. It really is good. Really, I'm so glad really you good. want to keep it. Yeah, I do want to keep it. Hopefully, yes. I mean, we'll see when we need the next amp to capture. If I just yeah. go, I can't afford to get another amp and it's got to go. But it's hopefully. Um, yeah. It is very good. It, but it, it's a it one trick a, pony, isn't it? A one trick pony. But what a great trick. Yes. But it's it Where, is probably the most impractical amp that you can get. Not if you like but the that's sound. Not, <laughs> no, no, that's not true. It's, it's just, if you're doing a rock gig, if you're doing Foo Fires, fantastic. Well, or if, if you're, you're doing, doing what's Phil X's band called? I've forgotten. Um uh, the drills. The drills, yeah. The drills. If you're doing a that, gig, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're doing a function gig, no, it's not. It's not for that. It's not whereas, for that. whereas the, the, that BE Deluxe, yeah, is I would say probably the most versatile amp I've ever played through because it does. Yeah, yeah, it's really, that's really yeah, it yeah. really does everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Moxie said, "Good evening, both and the TSR community." Good evening, Pet. Hope you're well, mate. Desert Fishman, he says, hello from, from the Mojave. Wow. Wow. Cool. Very cool. What's the drive over there? Through... Oh, same as always. Hot. Hot and dry. Yeah, hot and dry. Future down. Uh, evening, everyone. That compressor video was great. But, oh, cheers, mate. Thank you. I don't currently have one. I think I'll look into that one. Yeah, cheers, um, Future Down. It's really hard doing a compressor video because... It's subtle, isn't it? Yeah, or the way that I like to use a compressor is is subtle. And I've, on, honestly, I've got a compressor on every single board. And um, it's ironic I, I, when you when you use a compressor in a mix, it's not subtle. You slam it. <laughs> well, I still think it sounds. I still think it sounds subtle in a mix. Yeah, the way that yeah. I use it, I, I don't. I don't use it so you can hear like all, all the Matt Bellamy <laughs> breaths and stuff. <laughs> Oh, what's her name? Um, Kate um, Bush. All the, all yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. But it's the same with Billie Eilish and stuff now. That's you know that's come back, isn't it? That that sort of ultra quiet but heavily compressed tone. I can't. Stop. I, I love compressors. I um, love compress. I love compressors. Don't get me wrong, but that that to me is over overcooked. But that pedal, it you know, if that's a genuine. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of glass in the back of a real um, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but if it sounds anything like for that in a pedal form factor, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to get a Fairchild and then convert it to take line level and all that sort of stuff. And... No, I'm, I'll find, I'm fine, thanks. But it's, yeah, it's a good it's a good sounding it's a really good sounding compressor. Mm, cool. Uh, Daniel, he said, "Good evening, rats. Love the Freeman amp. I made by a Cortex just to have that sound." Cheers, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you don't you don't have to get a Cortex. You can get the Tonex, which is much cheaper than. Uh, funny enough, we'll talk about that. Uh, than yeah, much, much cheaper, easier than to use. Much. <laughs> huh? Much easier to use. Oh my God, I tell you what. So. I, I captured. I spent two days capturing the the um, the Friedman Philex amp, and the Tonex captured it perfectly. Quad Cortex, I had to do do and do again until it until it was right. It kept doing these weird things to it. Mm. But um, I got it in the end. But it was um, yeah. The, the Tonex captures it absolutely perfectly. The only it's funny, the only amp I've really struggled to do the Tonex captures on was the 5150, because the gain is so high. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it just wasn't, it was it struggled. But I think it was me struggling to get a good tone rather than... Yeah. Yeah, well, well I'll, I'll edit that video and see if we can get something out of it. It's us just going... Just lots of, to... lots of. <laughs> there's a there's an old phrase that my late stepfather used in electronics, and it's tune for maximum smoke. That's exactly what it was. It was exactly yeah. what it was. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I'm yep. Oh God, hold on. It's going wrong. There we go. Oh God. Oh well. Uh, Gary, he says, "Hey gents, I have a Marshall Origin 50. Use it with the GX100 uh, Tonex." Oh, and Tonix in full cable method. Nice. Sounds decent, but wondering if the FRFR head rush is a better choice. Mainly play at home in studio. Really gig thoughts. Um, I've had a whole bundle of FRFR speakers for, for modelers, and I never get on with them. They I never get on with them. It's it, They're just PA speakers. This whole FRFR phenomenon boop, 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 is a bit of a... It's a bit of a joke, I think. I've been playing through PA speakers since 11 rack because mm. when we used to go out and demo 11 rack, I'd take two PA speakers and that, uh, that way I could actually use my voice in it as well. Cause I could put my, my um, speech microphone through the processor as well. And then this whole phenomenon of FRFR full range, flat response. It's just a PA speaker. The, the head rush speaker is actually an alto in drag. Yeah. Don't pretend it's got 2000 watts of power. It hasn't. It's probably got a 500 watt amp in it. So, which yeah. is still kin loud. Yeah. But, but don't, it's not. Don't buy into the, just get a couple of decent Mackie um, SRM 300, 350s. They're great. They're going for peanuts now, and you'll have mm -hmm. a great Get a pair and have a proper stereo. It's awesome. I think I think that's the way to do it. Get a pair, get a pair and use it in stereo because then you're getting the benefit out of the you know that system out of the GX100 because you can use the stereo effects. Yeah, and um <clears throat> and and I think just coming sometimes it can just feel a little bit flat and lifeless mm. coming out of an FRFR. Um, I used to have the Friedman one, the ASM12. It weighed an absolute ton. It was, it was, and I, I've had them all. I've had the Line Six one. I've had, I've had so many, and and I've never been, I've never been pleased with them. Get a pair of PA speakers. I'll, I'll have in ears, but yeah, but that's because I get the full stereo. I get the full stereo mix. I I know I worked with a, a guy in a band who had, um. I can't what the app, what the combo was, but he had a combo in basically his monitor rig was a combo in front of him, lent back, pointing upwards, and two yeah. PA speakers either side, and that was his rig, and it sounded amazing. Amazing, yeah. I mean, you well, know, that's we, great. 
that's great because i guess you could do your you could have all your, all your stereo effects coming from the pa speaker yeah. yeah in sort of full fidelity and your guitar tone coming from an app it's great yeah and it was a great it was a great rig but, but we had the crew and stuff to yeah move it around yeah yeah phil evening from Bracklesham bay cheers phil hope you're well future down he says uh yeah i sold a supersonic because it had tube rattle and as heard they had terrible quality control as well that's a shame isn't it it is because it was a it, genuinely it's a brilliant amp yeah yeah um and whoever whoever got it has done well because I, I mean I, I don't i won't brag but i did sell it for more than i paid for it so i'm happy with that um yeah but you know not a lot more probably enough to play the, pay the petrol to go and get it from nearly yeah. bar um yeah. but you know it was a nice amp i enjoyed playing through it nice nectari as he says even gents how happily would you go amplis for the rest of your lives oh i'd be all right i'd be all right i mean i wouldn't I'd prefer to go, you know, on certain gigs, I'd, I'd prefer to go to, to have an amp, but I could, I could, I could quite happily go amp list and it, it's just getting used to it. What happens is you, uh, you, you buy a model and, and, you know, whatever it might be and you play through it and you go, God, this sounds great. This sounds great. And you play through it for a couple of months and you're really happy. Then you plug into an amp and you go, ah, and then you unplug the amp and you plug back into the, into the model and you go, ah, oh, what's going on with this? And then you get used to it again, and it's just, um, it's just what you get used to. I yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm enough not a guitar player, player to really, to, to really comment on it. But I love playing through real amps because I can. I, it's not yeah. like I'm a keen guitar player. If if, if the, the the conversation is similar to, is it like? Playing electric drums versus the real versus real drums, it's not as far apart as that because electric drums versus real drums is a very different thing. I mean, it's very different. I disagree. I disagree. Oh, no, I think it's completely I disagree. It's exactly the same. That to me, is, that to me is, is is the exact argument. You're only saying that because you're 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 a drummer like a guitar player that just wants to play through yeah. amp. Yeah. So. That's what it is. If you played through an electric drum kit and you're getting all those big, you know, the big stereo mix in, in your headphones and you're playing through it, you go, God, this is great, this is great. And then you, and then you go into a normal drum kit and you go, ah. It isn't it's... about the sound, though, and it's not about the sound with modelers. It's the feel. It's the same. It's exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Um, yeah, it's... Look, I, I did a gig... A couple of years ago, I remember when I took along, it, it was when I had that matchless lightning. Yeah. 15, 15 watt amp. Took it along to a gig. And everyone, the whole band complained. Even 15 loud. watts was too loud. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> because I needed, yeah, I, the, 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 the amount of level that I needed to, to, to hear myself mm. against the drummer and stuff, everyone else thought was too loud. Mm. And it's just like, well, you know, because everyone's used to it now. Everyone's used I'll to it. Ears, please. Yeah. It, so you just go in the ears and you can hear everything. I, yeah. If, if I was on a big sort of stadium stage, absolutely. G give me give me a big amp. Give me wedges and stuff. And... It's different, isn't it? Yeah. If you're, play if you're playing, I mean, even by big stage, I mean, Butlins is a big stage. Yeah. You put a thousand, you put a hundred watt amp on stage at Butlins, the front of house engineer is going to be telling you to turn it the down. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And that's a Without big a gig. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny how the guitarist always gets told to turn down, but the drummer's like, well, that's just, it's just what they used to. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And, all, and also, we, we all know that 4 by 12s are so directional or can be so directional. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, there's things you can do. You can get sort of baffles and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Dermot, did any did anybody try the new Katana practice gizmo? The reviews were positive. Yes, I did one. I, I did the launch video, at Dermot. So uh, go and check that out. Check it out. I. Kings, do you think that when technology comes round to where these captured 
to where these captured thingies you've done become obsolete uh, and you'll regret parting ways with some of these amps that's a really good question and yes yes i think we will but as paul and i have discussed this as you can imagine at some point the next round of capture thingies will come round it will be a quad cortex 2 or the tonex 2 or whatever and we'll go we need to up our game to do captures for the next thing and we will have to go and find amps again because yeah if, if just, even just me i would have something like 30 odd amps in here now that's ridiculous i think the guys that do it seriously like your uh tone junk i can't remember what it's called tone junkie. tone junkie yeah um and you know uh, worship tutorial that those guys they have all the amps they have they, they keep all their amps and and rightfully so because that's what they do and then you know they do really well out of it and and they do a great job especially um worship tutorial guys they do a great job mm -hmm. And um, but that's their you know that's their bread and butter and they're and they're making lots of money out of that so they've got to keep those amps but as we'll talk about in a minute you know amps are a dying thing especially big powerful amps yeah it's, it's odd isn't it very odd we'll get to that in a minute um, amazing to see we're hovering around a hundred viewers tonight as well which is great yeah. Yeah. nice desert fisherman any plans for TSR to make IRs. Not at the minute. I've never done IRs. We should do. Um, yeah. Don't you have to do IRs of, spe of specific cabs? We've only got, like, between us, we've got, like, four cabinets, haven't we? I've got, I've got one, two, three. I've got three. You've got, you've I've got, got three. Few. I've got three at oh. the minute. Four. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you make an IR? <laughs> it's an impulse response, isn't it? Hence the phrase IR. Um, exactly. You can do it in. I think you can what? do it in Cortex. Oh, can you? Okay. You so. can do it in the McDSP's. Um, yeah. Where was I? Can't remember it's called for me right now, but you can do it that way. Yeah. 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 I, th I think I, I think it'd be a good idea to do it. Mm, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Ned, he says, uh, "Hello, hope you're all fine, and you may." I'm obsessed with Biffy at the moment. Going to a th uh, going into the third week. I don't listen to anything else, and I'm really enjoying myself. I I went through a bit of a biffy stage. Yeah, yeah, really good. Just massive guitar tones. Yeah, got no problem. I, with really, that. Like, I really like the I, I really like the poppy the poppy end of their stuff. But mm -hmm. really, it's such a great band, massive tones. Yeah, got no problem with that. No, David Bruce, he said, Jovi, hold on, what's the hair? What's the hair? Check it out. <laughs> uh, he said, Jarvi, I still have faith. I still have faith. The SLO 100 is still upcoming. I sold my Friedman. Oh, he's got an SS1. Uh, and I'm weeks away from purchasing mine. See, that's what we're looking for next. We're looking for the Steve Stevens. Yes, we are. Um, or an Why SLO. Did sell... Why did you sell the Steve Stevens over? over... Oh, I, I, I think Steve Stevens is is the amp, but I mean, James is, James has got that SLO pedal which sounded. Well, we haven't, the video hasn't gone out yet, but yeah, it does sound monster, doesn't it? Incredible, yeah, yeah. I, I think I mean I remember the last time I tried an SLO one hundred, which was a snakeskin one, right? Ten ten years ago, maybe. I was like, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, but I think now I listen to it and. If I heard one now, I think I'd be pretty excited. Yes. Well, I'm I'm tempted, but yeah. If I sell some more stuff, I might, because I, I could probably, if I sell three or four amps, I could probably fund a, one of those. Uh, they're the amps that, that they're the amps that people want on the captures. Yeah. Yeah. Give the people what they want, as they say. Yeah. Great. Jerry Forever. He says, hello, guys. Just boarding a flight to London. Oh, nice one. Safe journey, mate. Uh, where from? Yes, we're from. Safe journey. Lee says, Pro Tools Expert, I still sought out one of Russ's videos as recently as last week. He had a great trick to get a Moog lead sound with X-Band. Ah, nice. Um, yeah. There's some good stuff out there still, and it's still very relevant because the stuff is still there. It is. 
Uh, Tim, hello, mate. He says, hello, guys. Always enjoy the live show at work. Cheers, mate. Good to know you're not working hard. He said, I love my PV5150 combo. It's a beast to lug around. Too loud for wife and dogs. <laughs> yeah, just get an attenuator. Get an yeah. attenuator and you'll be able to run... Again, we need we need to we need to talk about amps. We need to talk about big amps and stuff. We'll get there in a minute. Yeah, Miguel. Um, Miguel says, "Hi, mates. Is there any adapter to put a tele neck pickup on a strap pick guard?" Thanks. Well, a tele neck neck pickup is really just a lipstick pickup. Yeah. So you can get you can get lipstick pickups for straps. Um. No, I tell you what you can do. There's plenty of so I, I don't know where you are, Miguel. Uh, there's plenty of companies that will that do custom pit guards. Uh, yeah. Pit guarding, pit guarding is is one. They're based in the states, um, and and you can basically just get them to, to to do anything you want. So if you want to have yeah, if you want to have like all tele pickups on a strat, you can do that. And obviously, you know the routing of your strat determines how you can do stuff. But yeah, they will do any any custom pick guard that you need, routing and colours and all that sort of stuff, materials and cool. Jim, he said, did you guys see the new Line Six Catalyst CX amps? Yes, in the news, in the news today, uh, they added six more amp sims and new effects. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute actually, because I think that's um, I think they did they did some good stuff there. Cool. Dave, he says, I play rock in a three piece. We all play with loud amps, big drum kit monitors, and our own PA. Mic'd up guitar, couldn't go silent stage. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. And and I envy you. Mm. The only thing is, you might go to a venue and they go, nope. I've I've turned up to wedding venue. Obviously, a three piece rock band is probably not going to get booked for a wedding venue. But you know, uh, the talent at, at my band back back in the day. You know, our our video was us playing on a big, huge festival stage to 40,000 people. You know, there was no two ways about it that we were a big, loud band. And then we get booked for someone's wedding at the Dog and Duck where they've got a Christmas tree sound meter. And you go, uh, we didn't know you were a loud band. So, well, you saw the video. I mean, we're not hiding it. We're not hiding the no. fact that we're a loud guitar but guitar rock band oh god i hated that i hated that doing those the, venues this oh and, and you're just all you're doing is just watching Watch that sound yeah. and it's just you can't you can't relax and, and and all it does is just i mean every time it just cuts off your gear 10 times a night and you just you just think why did that happen because we're not playing any harder it's just like a bass frequency just goes mm. I did I did one gig where we tripped the meter with an acoustic guitar and me singing in the first dance. <laughs> At that point, did I you, ever do, the, do you ever do the trick where, where, where you found a socket that wasn't that wasn't linked yeah, to the so many times? Had the Brilliant. whole band running off one 13 amp socket. Jeez. Wow. So dangerous. The Elmwood 560 said, not sure if you guys meant to skip me. I haven't seen I haven't seen that particular this is your first comment, Elmwood. Yeah, I haven't seen I can't see can't see any other comments. So this is your first comment, mate. Um so maybe you didn't push a return or something, maybe. Um no, but we no, we, we don't skip. So not sure if you guys meant to skip me. I'll ask again. Have you tried the free online collab tool from Elk Audio? Looks interesting. Yeah, Elk Audio do a piece of hardware as well that is um it says it gives you next to zero latency. So basically you can play with a band over the internet. I think it uses a Chrome browser. I love the idea of that. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's, it's, it's really good. Mm. It's really good. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's looking good for, the, for, for this event. Cause when we could do jamming live over the. Oh, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. Yeah. I haven't used one. Um, you should definitely get in contact with them. Because that is that's all over your your sort of thing, right? I have been, it before. We have we have a few times, and I've just been such a loser. Mm. Um, Elk Audio, yeah, no, no, but we have. I haven't tried the free. Uh, I haven't tried the tool. Maybe that you know they've managed to do it without the hardware now. 
which is but, but yeah definitely worth getting in contact with them james i have made a note nice and quite oh, right, quite right. right. Dave says... oh and they do they do i love amps mm. that's why i've got one two three four five six seven eight, nine in here at the minute <laughs> oh, nice that's what you want uh, Autogeddon one he says evening all don't forget to give thumbs up cheers Autogeddon yeah it really does help yeah if you can give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying it if you're not don't but there's it's there's no there's no bad thing can happen from you giving us a thumbs up uh, Jeff Cook reamplist since I decided to go digital and sold all amps I've only bought 11 valve amps <laughs> <laughs> good work <laughs> that's, that's what happens because amps are just you know guitar players we love amps mm. Uh, great Jerry Forever says Amsterdam to London. Ah, ah ship, ship on. on. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I have to watch later. What do you think for Marshall 1960s Blues Breaker JMP 210 combo? Have a chance to get it. Um, great if you can turn it up. I promise yeah. you, it sounds absolutely naff at low volumes, yeah. and that's and that's why people don't like them because they they plug into them and they go, that doesn't sound very good. Mm. It has to be turned up, especially that amp. Yeah, that is one of those amps where you go, why does this sound rubbish? And then you turn it up to the, 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 the point where it hurts, and then you go, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That amp has got to be turned up. Neil Conway, dropping in to share my thumb. Cheers, mate. He said, I have to get back to work to buy more gear. <laughs> How noble our... It's this oh what's that word Sisyphian Sisyphian like trial of climbing the mountain for the best gear I, I will look up that word mm. good to learn a new word it's like word of the word of the day toilet paper yes <laughs> SP good evening guys how do you feel about the AI technology could change the music industry we've heard songs with different vocals for instance what would happen in guitar amps and effects so um i've recently left my so i was part of a production company and a publishing company called dwb music and i've just left dwb music that's one of those reasons because this is what this is the way that i see it going i i don't see i i don't see the music industry anything good happening from ai anything good for the music industry for for, for artists and stuff because you know you're going to be able to do anything you want it's in you know like i used to do tv music music for television shows and films and that sort of stuff and it's just going to be it's just changing the industry so much while things like doing youtube videos where you're demonstrating you're demonstrating a particular piece of equipment the ai can't do that I, the only thing i will say i'd say i i completely agree ai in music creation I think is very worrying, you know, because there's a great line in the movie I robot, which does transfer from the original Isaac Asimov book. And there's a great bit where um, the police detective is saying, can a robot create a great masterpiece or write a symphony? And the robot turns around and says, but can you? <laughs> very good um and I, i'm a great believer in you know everyone with you know everyone now on, on a phone or a laptop has the ability to make an album or rather should i say they have the technology to make an album hmm. they don't necessarily have the creative ability to make a good album yes some, some people say oh you know, I, I, I can do that. So, yeah, you probably can. And I, I would I would mix it or do whatever is differently because we are different people. I think AI is going to get to a stage where it, everything starts to sound homogenous and the same. I don't think so. I think it's I think it's going to I think it's going to be. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see, won't we? But, but um, OK, well, what, I will, say, what I will say, though, is the AI in tech. like. 
artificial intelligence, machine learning, call it what you will. Isotope have been using it for a long time and mm -hmm. doing some really clever stuff. Yeah. You know, all the assistant, the um, mix assistant, the tracking assistant, all that sort of stuff is based on machine learning, AI. And mm -hmm. it's blooming clever. Whether anyway, you let's, have let's have a look what happened in guitar amps and effects. Well, guitars, I don't think, can be affected. Um, I, can't, I can't see how AI is going gonna, is gonna to do anything with guitars. Mm. And effects, yeah. Possibly, well, effects. I think more than amps, and yeah, you know, right. multiple effect units and stuff. I think, I, I think, th from that sort of point of view, from some of the effects and stuff, I think it could be quite, you know, in interesting. I think there'll be a way very, very soon. We've already got modelling technology. I think there'll be a way soon where you can put in a Pink Floyd track and say, "I want this guitar sound." And it will create you a, yeah. an algorithm that will make that guitar sound. Will that mean you sound like Dave Gilmore? No. <laughs> but it, it will just mean that you could say I'm not sound like Dave Gilmore if Dave Gilmore was in the room playing your guitar. There, there already is that, by the way. I can't remember who did it, but that, that has already happened. Yeah, so anyway, well, yeah. We we shall see. Great Planet says, Silent Stage makes no sense. It's heartless and it has no vibes. Well, I would argue it makes perfect sense, um, but, but it's not what we want. Mm. It, silent Stage is, is exactly what... If, if you think about it, it's it's a, if, if you're playing to a live audience, the audience doesn't care if you've, got, if you've got an amp behind you or not. And the sound engineer cares if you've got an amp behind you. And all he, all he wants to do is to create a perfect mix without any interference. If you've got a guitar amp, he's got to try and balance that guitar amp with a PA. So he's, he's trying to make it sound like your guitar amp is coming out the speakers. It's, 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 it's a hard job. And, you know, the, the, the amp turns up and then you're trying to keep up with the drummer. So he's got to turn the PA up. It makes complete sense. But it's I agree. It has. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's got no vibes. I went to see Gary Moore at the Sheffield Arena. Yeah. Uh, he was playing through two DSLs, two, yeah. two 4 by 12 cabs, and you could, from where I was stood in the fifth row, you could hear the amps over the enormous stadium-sized PA. Nice. It was, and, and that's great. And, yeah, no, and absolutely fantastic, and absolutely fantastic. For, for us guitar players, nothing better than hearing Gary Moore with, with 200 watt amps nothing yeah. better than that even, even if i couldn't hear anything else i'd be well happy <laughs> um uh, uh anthony says silent stage all the way for us we uh, predominantly do clubs and functions there we go it's pretty much required um in a lot of places these days to be fair that an iem is the best sound i've ever had i couldn't agree more totally. iem is definitely the best sound. do you know what i mean there's even like stadium bands that go out and and then singers now, the singers of these stadium bands want the guitar player to have either a silent stage or the um, a an ISO cab. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 not just about it's about the singer as well. It's it's how's the singer gonna gonna perform best? And if a singer's got a hundred watt cab, a hundred watt amp blasting behind him, and he's he or she is you know screaming down the microphone trying to get over this thing. In in their voices so it's it is providing quite a lot of bonuses i think i think we also are are doing guitar players a significant in, injustice we've already said that four by 12s and cabinets are very directional the thing that is not directional is a bass amp a bass amp on stage is just going <laughs> everywhere especially on a hollow stage oh god have you ever read that where just you just get the 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 the, the, the well, bass no amp. Oh, pleasure. It's fucking horrible. It really is. <laughs> it is horrible. Oh, yeah. Bass players. Foxy bass players. The Elmwood. Uh, I thought you guys immediately for the up when I saw it. Yeah. Cheers, cheers mate. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it, it, it does look really interesting, doesn't it? Hmm. Ah, Mr. Bourne. He said, Good evening, rats. Hope you're all well. And you, mate. Hope you're, hope you're doing very well. 
Rock Blues. Hey, Paul, you're really good at guitar. Oh, that's very kind of you, mate. Um, I, 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 the videos hide a lot of thoughts. Actually, you should, you should hear that there's a big nasty fault in the 335 video that I just thought, oh, I'll just leave that in. <laughs> oh, and apparently you have to remember that um, Thunderstruck is legato. <laughs> oh, we've got to talk about that. We've got to talk about that. That is, that <laughs> is good. That's brilliant. So, so he says, uh, who are your influences? You sound kind of like Neil Sean. Wow. I, I, um, I would love to be as good as Neil Sean. Um, I like, oh, I think I grew up on 80s, 80s sort of rock, so that sort of stuff, like, you know, everything from Slash to, I'm, I'm listing all the people that are just saying, they're just amazing guitar players, and, you know, I can't, I can't even hope to be as anywhere near, but, you know, like, 80s, like, loads of, the, and then Mark Knopfler and Gary, Gary Moore and, um, I'm trying to think of other Ed Clapton, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'd, I'd love love guitar, but do you know do you know who stuff that I really like and wish I could play? <laughs> yeah, we all. Um, do you know the the massive thing that changed the way that I looked at guitar was who was the guitar? Leslie West. There was uh, Le Leslie West. I think it was a guitar player from. I think the band, uh, some some will comment Mountain, possibly something like that. But there was a there was a uh, there was a guitar concert at mm -hmm. Hammersmith Odeon, and they filmed it. Right. It was called like I don't know, it was art guitar. It was something like that, and it had um, it was it was a guitar player from Yes. Um. It always plays the big the big the the, the big box. Oh. Um... Oh, you, anyway, it doesn't matter. And and had loads of sort of famous guitar players. And, and then Leslie West came on with this Steinberger and just got the most amazing guitar tone. I, I, I probably look back at it now and go, oh, Steve Howe. Steve Howe, thank you. Yeah, Steve Howe was there. There, there were loads of guitar players, like loads of sort of famous guitar players and stuff. And that was cool. Yes. Anyway. Yes. Very cool. At this point, we should go. Ah, oh, Lord Branstead. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. He's, he's gone and said, Steve Howe. Steve Howe. Cheers, Lord. Uh, when they get to Is Lord Branstead actually a Lord? Oh, it would be great if he was. Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Boom. I think this is the second part of the question, but yeah. Anthony Maple thought so. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I, it's, it's required yeah. a lot of energy. Yeah. Lee says, Lee says, yeah, yeah, Lee, uh, Lee uses silent rig. Sound meters, what's the actual point in the venue having live music, even if it's a wedding venue? Just don't book bands. I've had that conversation many times over the years, yeah. The other one that I've I've had lots of times is when they say, oh, oh we've got a 92 oh, decibel limit. And I say, 92 dB what? And they go, 92 dB. I said, well, you've just said, 92 db that's a ratio you haven't actually said the volume and they go what and on one gig bags turned around to the venue manager and said or turned to me with the venue manager and said go on let him have it so i let rip oh, into no. <laughs> and he oh, looked no. at me and he went oh, no. should we turn it off then because you clearly know what you're talking about and we went yes please if you would yes I can't think of anything nicer than you talking at me about sound pressure level. I think that would. Oh, I wasn't even talking about sound pressure level. I was, I was talking about DBA, DBU, DBV, and they all looked at me and went. Exactly. Good. This is what I'm talking about. Can we this accept is... that I know what I'm talking about at this point and you don't? Can we turn the bloody thing off? And they did. Oh, my God. That would have been my. Hearing that would have been my nightmare. Yep. Uh, Dave Hardy, we are, we are lucky to play in in the york area and haven't had to worry about being loud also pubs uh know by our name the noise doctors what to expect <laughs> awesome anthony he says lee it uh, depends on where they are and what they're set to i don't mind them at 90 db behind the bar that's fine 80 85 db uh on the back wall isn't well uh, and some place there's a place just on the road from here uh, um Six Mile Bottom, I think it's called. It's a hotel. And where they put the drums, the meter is next to the drummer. 
brilliant. So I, I, I actually wanted, I, I played, I did one set where I played with nothing but the tips of my fingers. And the guy was apparently at the end, other end of the venue and said it was still too loud. And I went, <laughs> I said, I'm backing up and going home then because at this point, it's me being here. Great planet. Tone matching is a thing now. Yeah, it's not very good yet, though, in my opinion. It will when, get to the point. Yeah, where... yeah. Yeah, I can't remember who did it, who, who's doing it. Lee says, Anthony, any venue that has one fitted has had issues or instructions from the local council and the management will always be nervous about volume. Just don't book them yet. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Anthony Maplethorpe, he says, Great Planet, uh, at Great Planet, and it's been for over a decade. Yeah, but it's not very good yet. It's not very accurate, not very nice sounding. It's all a bit wobbly and stuff. Oh, we're we still talking. Okay. Hollywood actress, evening all. Uh, I am late tonight. The AI debate is interesting. I got asked uh, this uh, about our work earlier this week. My response was, I think I see people becoming AI pilots and drivers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood, you you can get it to write songs or podcasts or summarise information, but us at the uh, pilot, pilot will need to construct the information. A bit like a chief making a chef making a dish, yes. Mm. But you know, forty years ago, drum drummers were going to be out of business. Out, you know, there won't be there won't be any drummers because it'll be drum machines. Oh, that would have been great. Oh, you cynic, Jeff Brock. You said uh, guitar AI peaked at Gibson Robo tuners. <laughs> yeah, I think guitar players are very traditionalists. Mm. Uh, Anthony says, uh, uh, Lee Abraham plan functions. It's hard not to do. Um, to be honest, we've never had a problem. They need to be able to talk at the tables at functions. It's not a rocky. That's fair enough. And you always get the, you always get the, I love the old lady that walks across the front of the stage going. Well, or when I was on ships, we did one ship and the, the person was sat directly in front of the PA trying to read a paper. <laughs> uh, and I, was, I was like, Hello. Uh, it's gonna. I said to him, "It's gonna get louder, mate." I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, Fra M. Positive grip bias amp effects can copy the sound of an amp guitar from an MP3 sound clip. Ten seconds max. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, nice, it's, but it's not very good yet. That's the answer. It will get up to the point where it's really good. Mike Blue, howdy from Austin, Texas. Howdy, Mike. Playing on a hollow stage this Saturday, the bass and the monitors go nuts. Yeah, they need to. They just. I don't know why they don't pack under the stage. Just pack stuff. It's hard to do, is it? Brantsty, he says, couldn't get it sounding good in the band though. The tone, the tone X TSO Independence, which sounds okay at home, uh, came alive through the PA. Sounded great, clean or dirty. You have saved my day. Pleasure. That's that's sounds okay at home. That's because loud. Awesome. That's because louder is always better. Yeah, um, if you don't think it sounds good at home, you might want to turn up your input level on the on the input on the tone X. Oh, by the way, I keep getting this question, and it's it's starting to get a bit frustrating. About I get it every day. Someone sends an email through about tone X, saying what's the input level? What what input level do you recommend? It's dependent on guitar, so it's it's not set by preference. It's set by the guitar. So just turn it up until it sounds good, I think. Yeah. By the way, you guys are a great team. You allow each other time to speak, which is major. Thanks, guys. What? What? Yeah, oh, <laughs> damn, you did it for me. <laughs> knock, knock. There we go. No, knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cat. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing interrupting cat. I love the interrupting cow joke. <laughs> Chicago, Tim, James, could you recommend an... El Avid 11 rack used today. Are they upgradable if they're bought used? Just wondering if it's worth it. I use a pod two for late night practice. Oh, wow. definitely feels better than a pod two. Yeah, an 11, 11 rack, I would recommend every day of the week, night, whatever time you like. They sound awesome. They still sound awesome. It's still there. I love the thing. Um, They there was one upgrade ever. Um, it was a firmware upgrade that was 
fairly major. You know, it added lots of amps and lots of cabs and stuff. Um, I would have thought most would have been done. If you give me a sec, hang on a second. I will tell you what the firmware is for it. It is. This is great. Great, great radio, isn't it? Great. Oh God. I hasn't just switched on the switch this on and just watching us just watching you look at a screen. I'm just trying to find the version, the, the software version. Uh firmware version. You need to be on rack version 2.0, build 0 0.1.5.3. That will be the latest version. There we go. There, there. We, we are nothing if not thorough. Yeah, yeah. Done, Steve. Steve Howe. Howe. And again, on next Steve one. Howe. Yes. Right, Lee. Lee says AI. I heard about AI in medicine. Has been finding new antibiotics and creating new treatments. That's a useful side of AI. Awesome's, awesome's. Yeah. Mm. Richard Paul. He says hi, chaps. Purchased the Tonix to run four cable method with the Helix, and just may get the Philex pack from you guys. Ah, cheers, Richard. Uh, yeah, that's very that good. It's very, good. It's very, very good. Guitar tone is in the fingers, lads. Absolutely. But it is. Guitar tone is de it's definitely in the fingers. But you can't make a Fender Princeton sound like a Marshall. It's so no. there's there's still tone. But mm. yes. Pet says, did you guys catch George Benson on Bia and Beato? A hell of a talent. His live vocals are off the chart. I haven't I haven't seen that one yet. I haven't, but I, I saw it was happening or it happened, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But George, yeah, George Benson's great, isn't he? Uh, Lord Branson, I'm not a real lord, but sometimes get as drunk as one. Nice, good work, good work. Yeah, Hollywood, uh, Lee, that's amazing. I didn't know that. What was? Oh, yes, about the the, the yes. yes. Tom Paul, you like hearing the construction results from James more than the D. <laughs> db combo yeah i'd love that i'd love james just talking about dbfs dba db whatever and then and then also reading out the firmware of his 11 rack hey this is public service broadcasting darling we, we, we are we are here to do, do uh, our our listeners as much help as we possibly can kura he says uh or they say do you have any preference of guitar cabinet and recording situation, open back or close back? Close um, to me. I don't mind actually. I think I don't think I've ever stipulated. I think I just both. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, well, I don't. I sound much better as um as close backs. Yeah. Interesting. In my experience. There you go. Up. Not, there's no way Al has made it. There is no way he's made it to York or to Beverly in two and a half hours from here. It wasn't two and a half hours ago. He left. He left about an hour and a half ago. Hour and a half ago. There's, there's still still no way he's done that. Um, Al says uh, that gig was called Night of the Guitars. Well done, mate. I have it on VHS cassette at home. Steve Howe, Leslie West, Mountain, yeah. Randy California from Spirit. Awesome gig. It was really good. I remember it being really, uh, yeah, I should look that up. I should, I should look that up. But yeah, when Leslie West came on with that Steinberger, it was just like, wow, what a tone. Which is and ironic. Going, Steinberger's got that, um, it's got the trem that keeps tuned and it's just, that's why that's why I bought two Steinbergers. Because of that. Alan McDonald, I work at cybersecurity. AI is new and unregulated to trust. It's too new and unregulated to trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry guys, what for? <laughs> what did Tim do? Don't, know. Don't worry, mate. It's all good. It's all good. The <laughs> onward, I ditched my Kemper a few years ago. That uh, you guys may be talking me into Tone X. Oh yeah. Yeah, you love Tone X. It's very good. Tim, he says, thank you, James. What was that for? I wonder what that was for. You have 11 rack stuff. Oh, yes, that was what it was. Oh, okay. 
uh soren albark he says can you eq away the harshness in the boss katana 50 or would another speaker help i have seen several of your videos and anderson's comparison but still not sure i've done a video of eq how to eq in in, in the katana so um yeah just go through that um yes you, yeah, you can definitely eq away the harshness yes uh, Martin says, hi, Rats. The head rush is avid 11 base effects. What's your opinion of it? I'll let James talk about this. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Head rush was based on the original 11 rat technology uh, and, and the 11 plugin technology. Uh, it was bought as a VIP was bought by in music. Um, I think the effects are really good. I think the amp models are really good. Are they as good as something like a Axe FX? Probably not. Uh, I yeah, I always I always describe there. There's not a pro. There's not, not, a pro there's not a probably. I described the, the difference between Axe FX because it was Axe FX two at the time. Probably not even Axe FX two. Probably even Axe FX one. I described it as an eleven rack was drivable by a guitar player. And Axe effects, you had to be a rocket scientist to get the best out of. Yeah. Um, you, you could, any any monkey, because it was me, could turn that thing on and get a great noise out of it by tweaking a few things and, and making a few changes. That is not the case with the Axe effects. Um, yeah. Do I still think it sounds good? Yes. Does it sound as, as good? No. But it is getting on for 15 years old now. Yeah. So, but... You know, we've been playing through amps that are 20, 30, 40 years old recently. So, but, but what do you think of the head rush? I think Martin was asking. I don't like the head rush MX5 as much as I like that, even though theoretically it's the same, but it's not. The MX5 is not as good sounding as that is. And I don't know why. I just, I, I wish it was. I bought an MX5 to be an emergency replacement for that. I even transferred all my patches over to the MX5, and it does not sound the same. No. It doesn't feel the same either. No. And it Definitely. hurts. Wadey, 1960 Custom Shop. He said, hey, guys, hope you're all well. And to you, been listening while driving home. Finally made it in time to say hey. Hello, mate. Hopes all is good. Johnny Love, I like all the nerdy details about gear, TSL James goes into keep it coming well there you go you do have a fan you've got a fan <laughs> just the one <laughs> someone will put up with you al says peter Barrow services charging up nice well not nice i saw a program on peter Barrow. it's one of the one of the worst places in the country apparently i used to live in peterborough <laughs> did you yeah. i always thought peterborough was, was supposed to be quite a nice place but it was a number of years ago That's, you know it, yeah it went, it went down here when i left yeah I, oh well, that's why yeah uh, Mike says Leslie West played a one pickup Les Paul Junior with mounting huge tone. Yeah, that's what I, I think. That's my next. Um, that's my next purchase. I want a Les Paul Junior one pickup. One, nice. one, P9, one pickup. Nice. Weekly forex trading tips from Mark Baldman. Oh, Lee struggling with own hammer. Ah, I think I've got an email from from weekly forex trading tips from Mark Baldman. Um, there is no way of contacting them. The four by twelve IRU reference. Is it in the I in the R evolution bundle? So Lee, um, if it, um, if the name's Mark, so Mark contacted us the other day and was asking about your own hammer preset, your the IR that you use. Any idea what pack it's from? Um, Lee's over tomorrow as well, Mark. So. Um, Lee might be able to to help there as well, but yeah, Lee, Lee, if you can remember what the whole pack was from, because um, Own Hammer aren't getting back to Mark. Right, there we go. there we go. Thanks for reminding me, Mark. Anthony says, do you know uh, anywhere in the UK that can make a custom neck? Want to replace the one on my strap for profile, like my Tom Anderson with roasted flame maple neck? Struggling to find a custom a custom maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's loads of places that could. That could make you a custom neck, like literally loads of places. Um, who would I recommend? You could have a chat with 
uh, Feline Guitars. Uh, they're based in Croydon, but he'll be able to do he'll be able to do that for you. Um, who else would I recommend? People that actually make the neck from scratch. I mean, there's loads of loads of good luthiers out there. Luthiers, luthiers. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, I mean, any good luthier should be able to make you the neck you want. Just find your local luthier and go and have a chat with them. Let me know where you are, Anthony. Nectarius, drop one, Telecaster, Stratcaster, Les Paul. What's that? Drop one as in get rid of. One's got to go. Huh? One's got to go? Yeah. Oh, God. For me, it's me, it's a telly. It's funny, isn't it? Oh, my. Get out. What are you doing, man? (laughs) All respect. that's That's the most useful one. See, I, I, I'd play a Strat and a Les Paul every day of the week. In fact, I do oh. most weeks. I love Les Pauls, I, and, and I've got I've got a great Les Paul, but it's 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 and Lee's the same. We, we have this conversation when Lee comes over. They're they're awkward. It's an awkward thing. And do you know what? Do you know why I look at back with a Les Paul? Because you have to have it halfway with your body. Yeah, because I I wear it there. I went there. It just looks stupid. A Les Paul needs to be needs to be yeah. down there, and I can't. To me, it's really uncomfortable. That's why they call it belt rash, not belly rash. <laughs> Nipple <laughs> rash. <right there. laughs> oh God, I'm trashing the joint. <laughs> yeah, I love. I mean, I, I love a Les. I, I love a Les Paul. Um, um, should we do Z News? Yes. Hopefully, hopefully, Lee will be getting back to Mark. Yes. Uh, yes. Hopefully, Lee will be be charming in. Um, Lee, if 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 for some reason you just want to text, you, you want to email me, you can do that as well. Oh, Lee, Lee unsent the message. Oh, he unsent a message. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, yes, let's do the news. The news. Um. Yeah. That one. That one. There it is. Uh, right. First thing, Gibson releases the Jimmy Page EDS twelve seventy five double neck. How much is this, James? One million dollars. You're not I far off. It's, um, it's it's forty grand, isn't it? Or something ridiculous. Okay. Can I just say the amount of shops that you go into? Yeah. And Gibson have done them, and 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 Gibson have done them a deal on the on, on the SGW. On the SG double neck because they can't sell them, mm-hmm. and then they release the Jimmy Page one, which is yeah. basically it's fifty grand, fifty thousand pounds. It's fifty grand, and Gibson cannot sell these things normally. It's absolutely, but I don't know what's going on. But it's a limited run, fifty pieces worldwide. I get why Gibson are doing it because you, you know Gibson. It's it's just they're becoming a lifestyle brand. They're not a guitar company anymore. But, but, I mean, yeah, it's becoming a thing because you're not going to play that. That's things. If if you start selling guitars for that amount of money, they're just going to hang on the wall, aren't they? They're not going to be yeah. not going to be played by anybody. It's a shame, but I get why they do it. Mm. Uh, talking about Gibson, uh, so Gibson have um, standard McCartney Theodore. Uh, so, so this one is different. This has got block inlays. Where are they? There they go. So it's got the Gibson Les Paul block inlays. Is it is is it a shape that only a mother would love? Yes, that's hideous. It's a bit weird, isn't it? It's like a tulip, isn't it? It's a bit weird. If the, if the top horn was like more Les Pauly, then you could accept the bottom horn going the wrong way. But oh, it's you're right. Weird. You're right. You're right. Yeah, if if that weird. was like. If that was like that, yeah, it would look nice, yeah. wouldn't it? But I, I get where they've done it because that was a it was a drawing by Ted McCarthy or, or was it Ted McCarthy that did it? Yes. Sorry, that's hideous. I don't know. I can't. I don't mind the black one. The the wooden one just looks. Weird. I bet you would never ever see. You'll never see one of those in the flesh in real life. Never in a million years. 
Well, you were at the Gibson Garage and get how a, much? Sorry, get garage, huh? How much? Uh, in dollars, two thousand dollars, eighteen nine nine pounds, uh, two thousand two hundred euro. Mental. Someone needs their bumps red. Right. God, it's all about Gibson. Look at this. Uh, Epiphone modern figured. Uh, Epiphone. Look at that. Yeah. The purple one's pretty. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. You love her. You love her. You love her. You, you do love like a modern looking thing, don't you? You prefer yeah. sort of that sort of stuff than than a vintage looking thing. Oh, don't get um, me wrong. If someone turned up with a, a 59 burst, I wouldn't yeah. be I wouldn't be pushing them away, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, the only thing is, so you, you know all this in um Epiphone are increasing their prices and the mm. prices now are, are the prices you used to pay for like a list for, for a USA yeah. list pool. Do you know where they're made? Korea. China. See, the, the, the thing is, yeah. Chinese manufacture these days is not something to be frightened of. No, 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 no. I don't think that at all. I I, I don't think that at all, but I think no, it's amazing. I, I did, but... I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't putting words in your mouth. But, mm. you know, so many good things come out of China now. I mean, you know, all Apple stuff is made in China. For sure. Um, they've got They've got the technology. They've got the workforce. They've got the the technical ability to do really good stuff. The, yeah. the And good stuff comes from China when Western companies have the infrastructure by which to be the QC on China. Because because sweeping statement time, Chinese manufacturer is great, but you do have to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Because it can rapidly deteriorate downhill several companies have witnessed this um and, and and several companies have been ripped off by you know by their lack of respecting on on um uh you know patents and stuff yes yeah yeah you um, give a monkey all that stuff well see lego the biggest one ever <laughs> Chego, yeah yeah it's true uh, lego lepin all of as soon as they let their their ip run out or that their their pattern run out yeah the chinese were all over it um yeah. but the thing is there was a time when you bought an epiphone because you couldn't afford a gibson now you can't buy gibson's cheap guitar the epiphone because it isn't cheap anymore no again it's uh, i would always just buy second hand buy mm -hmm. second hand yeah so many great things at the moment and we, we need to talk about that in a minute uh the the j rocket air child 660 very cool um, yeah it's really good really heavy well there's there's 35 tubes in it <laughs> 35 tubes 20 tubes i think in the 660 isn't there is it oh, yeah so 670's got the extra ones for the valving and oh. the biasing and the yeah oh look look and they're using my video well that's good isn't it well, that's yeah that is good hmm uh who else is video who did that one don't know who that, who that one is oh it's nice to be nice to be used yeah yeah no, nice to be uh they've used my video for that um uh line six catalyst which is the line six's version of the katana they brought out the new version but it's a free upgrade all right that's good uh, yeah so it's a firmware upgrade as well um and it gives you i think another six Oh no, 12 new amp models and 24 effects. Yeah, I still haven't tried one. No, and, and Line 6 don't talk to us, do they? I think because we're so in bed with Boss, that's why. But is... yeah, but it's funny, we, we, we did a, well, Line 6 is Yamaha. Yes. So, so you, you know, we spoke to, to, to Line 6 and yeah. we spoke yeah. to Yamaha at um, the NAM. At, at, at NAM show. We, we, uh, we should get. Um, Robbie. Robbie, Robbie, in yeah, we should get Robbie. Yeah, we said we were going to get Robbie on the show, and we should do that mm. because Robbie's mm. a great guitar player. We should, we should definitely get him on. Anyway, that's me done. Cool. cool. Should we get back in? Get back in. Um, you, you wanted to talk a little bit about 
the state of the audio of the audio stream. Yeah, I mean, I think I think at the moment, I th I think we're about to get. Well, I don't think it's just the audio industry. I I, I think everything's on a downturn, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. music equipment. Now you know there's a reason for that. Go on. Well, well, during the during pandemic, the pandemic, when everyone when had money, which was a complete a complete bizarre twist of fate. A load of the instrument manufacturers and instrument resellers went, oh, my God, we're in trouble. There's a pandemic. Many of whom then went on to have their best oh, yeah. month, quarters, years in their trading history. Because all of a sudden, everyone had a couple of quid and time. And they went, I'll learn guitar. I'll do a podcast. I'll yeah. whatever. And we're now two, three years mm -hmm. post pandemic yeah and all those instruments and mics and that gear and cables and everything are still in the system and they haven't been sold through so companies like toman have got warehouses absolutely full of stock all mm. their their brands that you know they want to take that wants to send them this year's stock they haven't got space for it so that so gear is being dumped onto the market at redonkulously low prices yeah. And the only person who wins in an ever descending spiral to the bottom price wise is the consumer because we'll be able to buy stuff dirt cheap, which means second hand prices will spiral because people won't be buying second hand stuff. Well, I don't think so because I don't think things are selling. I don't, I even think second hand stuff isn't selling. Which which is the worry? I think there is there are things you, you can pick up stuff for really reasonable prices at the moment. Like if you want to go and get an amplifier, if you want to go and get like a okay, so it's like a hundred watt amplifier. No one wants a hundred watt amplifier at the moment. No, nope. but to me, a hundred watt amplifier is brilliant because if you use a load box or if you use a, an attenuator, mm. it doesn't matter how loud it is. Go and get the best amp in the world, and you can pick them up for. As as we've proven for many months, you can pick up. Amps oh, for... I mean, we got that Friedman Phil X amp for a crazy price. Mm. At least fifty percent off. Um, it was it was way below fifty percent off. Right. Um, and 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 I've seen I've seen I've seen Friedman BE's hundred watt obviously mm. go for silly money and it's um yeah you know, at the moment there's you, you know you can go and get a, a great amplifier for, for for not a lot of money well those marshals i was picking up on from the auctions like two three hundred quid for a hundred watt dsl or tsl it's mental yeah yeah it is, it is absolutely mental so but, i mean uh, yeah the, the industry is going to take it's going to take years to recover from this yeah, I from, right, yeah. From the over ordering and the gluttonous kind of, you know, let's let's ride the wave. And and right now people are struggling. All the manufacturers are struggling, the distribution are struggling, suppliers, because they've all got stock and nobody's buying anything. Because at yeah, the moment, yeah. every cost of living crisis, whatever you want to call it, is hitting people hard. And what's yeah. the first thing that goes? Oh, do you do you like me go and buy a new guitar, or do you think I should really feed my family first? I think priorities, mate. It's guitars, mm. isn't it? <laughs> right. uh, good, good to know we're keeping it light. Should right, we, um, should we, should let's we... car carry on. But yeah, but let us know your thoughts on this because you know it's mm -hmm. it is an issue. Um, so I, I thought I would have sold the amps and things that I put on eBay like that, and I haven't. Mm. Uh, there's a bit of backwards and forwards. We're going to go in there because that's where it all starts to make sense again. There's a fisherman. He says, I returned a headrush core. It sounded okay, but it does not have the software which competing devices have, and that's a head scratcher. There you go. Yeah, there's no... Um, software control panel for them oh which is really bad 
Wow. Was for 11, Rick. Social media, WD1. He says, hi, guys. Uh, regarding the quad, which I love, it has that weird IDK. I don't know. Oh, I don't know what to call it. So, oh, I see. That's what IDK says. Okay. What to call it uh, that my amps don't. It's a certain EQ to set it at to get it to go away. Oh, is there a certain EQ to set it to make it go away? Will you be doing more videos? Thanks. Yeah, I'll do some more Quad Cortex cord cord videos. Um, I, yeah, I wonder what that is. I, I, you, you'll probably find that the, what happens is that, you know, an amplifier, it's, it has a frequency range between 200 hertz to 5K. So it's it's really rolled off on sort of ultra low frequencies and ultra high frequencies because the quad cortex and these capture devices can capture those ultra high frequencies maybe maybe it's that so yeah you could always put shelves you could put shelves on or um or cuts so think of a um how can i explain it think of, a, of an eq like a flat line oh there it is there it's like a flat line like a shelf sort of dips down sort of certain frequencies and and an eq cuts or filters sort of bracket off those uh, off those frequencies so you could try bracketing off the top frequencies on an eq just go and get like one of the there's three eqs in inside the core cortex um try it before the speaker or after the speaker i'll i'll do a video on it actually i'll, I'll do a video because i think that that would make a good video cool Brantsty, he says, own hammer website, two impulse responses, three. Go right to the bottom and choose page 24. Click on evolution bundle. There we Cheers, go. Nice one. Oh, that's, yeah, hopefully, Mark, that's that's helped. Um, Anthony Maplethorpe said, I've tried local ones. They're not interested. What are we talking about? Ah, right. Yeah, next. Um, I'm in Nottingham. I do know, uh, I do know feline, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, have a chat with, yeah, Jonathan, I think, from, from Feline. Didn't even think of contacting them. Look, I tried pra uh, Patrick James Eggle, but he wasn't interested. Yeah, he's too big. Yeah, you want to try it? and and Jonathan from Feline makes great guitars. And and you know he's he's at he's at the sort of shop sort of stage where he's not Patrick Eggle, which which is a big got a big operation operation yeah and he's got a very sort of specific brand that he does i don't suppose he would want to sell off necks and stuff no lord brancy there are stacks in that bundle but you should find it uh i choose mono uh 44 100 mz folder i think you're looking for uh own hammer 412 trad v30 mb1 l4 t13 good catchy titles there yeah, cheers, Lord Brancy. <coughs> uh, cheers, LB says Mark. Yeah. Nice. Lee says, Own Hammer IR. Crikey, it was some years ago. And from what I remember, I bought it as a standalone IR for about four pounds. Never bought packs. I either pick up free ones or singular ones when available. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. John Bourne. Paul, if you want a Les Paul Jr., do yourself a favor and check out the Eastman Double Cup. Oh, it's got to be a single cut. It's got to be a single cut. A killer guitar with a with a lollop ninety nice. They probably do a single cut. I think yeah. for me, even though I know the Eastman's going to be just as good, if not better, than the Gibson. James, ready? One, two, three. Resale value. Resale value. Resale value. And yeah, if you're going to go and get, it'd be almost like having. Here we go. Let's talk about Patrick James Eggle. Great guitars. Yep. Great guitars. Makes a Les Paul called the Mac, the Macon, I think it's called. Macon, you make on, yeah. Macon. Yeah. And he does like strat and he does a telecast. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. They're beautiful and they're and they're great. The resale value, the second resale value is very diminished and if I want a, if I want a telecaster, I'll go and buy a telecaster. If I want a strat, I'll go and buy a strat. Yeah. 
I want a Les Paul Junior. I, 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 I want in in my in my mind because I'm not sensible. I want I, I want a Gibson. Yeah. If um, I, yeah. Because the second hand market is is quite depressed right now, it's a good time to be buying, not to be yeah. selling. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I've got a, I've got a couple of guitars that I'm selling at the moment. Thanks, Lisa's Mark. I've got a couple of guitars that I'm selling at the moment. I need to get some money back for for, uh, for the three three five that I bought, mm. and then after that, um, I'm gonna go. And, I think I'm gonna go and get a, a junior, a, a junior or an SG. I'm thinking. Nice. Dave, he says, I'm off to London Friday to see Mr. Big on Saturday. It may pop into the Gibson garage, or garage, sorry, while I'm there, uh, just to get my lifestyle fixed. Nice. <laughs> um, Al and I were talking about that. He's down in London next week. I might be tempted to go down with him. Yeah? You're going to go? Yeah, I'm tempted. I wonder if it's worth filming. I wonder if it's worth doing a, a film. But they won't let you. Yes, they will. Really? Yeah. I think they will. Okay, well, maybe I'll take a camera. Social media, WD1, he says, uh, FYI, in the US, Sam Ash is a big chain like Guitar Center going out of business. That's right, yeah. yeah. We talked about yeah. that last week, actually. Yeah, well, Sammy Ash died, didn't he, about six mm. months ago? Six months ago, something like that? About that, yeah. Rock on Gibbo. Good evening, chaps. Do you guys have any experience with Persona Studio Live Mixes? Yes, both yeah. of us do. Yeah. Uh, just ordered one for my <coughs> use in my home studio as well as with my Ukrainian folk band. <laughs> nice, brilliant, brilliant mixers, really, really good. Sound great, quality's good. Uh, if you're going to use it live, I would flight case it, but I would say that of any brand of mixer, so yeah, great. And you because one, James, got, James got one that he uses that is it's they're built like tanks, aren't they? they it keeps going, it's getting on a bit now. Um, yeah, it must be seven or eight years old now. Gets no love at all. Never gets uh, <laughs> just takes a licking and keeps on ticking. It's great. Um, but we, we've recorded with them, haven't we? We did a recording at um, where were we? No, it wasn't. It wasn't you and me. It was I did some filming. And... Where's the studio with all the tie dye stuff in London? Um, oh, um, there, yes. Oh, god, oh, with the pub. Oh, I love that pub, yes, yeah, great, isn't it? Um, oh, strong great. room, strong room, yeah, strong room, yes, yeah. Uh, we did some recording there with one, it sounded great. Yeah. Um, it was really funny. We did two two sessions, we did one session with the band running everything through the Persona's console. And the second session, same track, was running everything through the conventional analog desk. Which was what, a Neve or an SSL? Yeah, a Neve, I think. Yeah. And what was hilarious is everyone preferred the sound of... The Neve. The Personas. And everyone, they... preferred, everyone preferred the flexibility and the functionality of the Personas because everyone could do their own mixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, this is the way forward. Mike says the whole point of Chinese manufacturing is cheap labor. What's happening to Epiphone's profit margin? It's going yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, it's not Epiphone, it's Gibson, isn't it? Mm. Gibson making the money. Nothing selling right now, says social media WD1. Yeah, it does feel like that. Yep. It does feel like that. I mean, I've got that, that 335 that I bought was, I, I think, was was really good price as well. Second hand, obviously. Uh, Dave Hardy says, I'm seeing second and Gibson's going for five to eight hundred quid at the moment. That ain't getting sold. Wow. Yeah. Jeff Rock, buy the guitar. Sorry, kids. Beans on toast for the next two months. Amen to that, brother. <laughs> beans on toast. They'll be fine. Social media says, okay, thank you. No problem. Do you want to hear, ah. a, really, want to hear a really funny story quickly? Go on. So when I was at university, there was a girl yep. um, that I knew who she had worked out she could buy a new guitar of, of this particular brand she wanted and with her student loan. And she worked out that she had enough money left over for beans on toast every day for the rest of the year. She would eat right. nothing but beans on toast. Uh, about six months into the year, she was taken to um, the London hospital on 
um, Whitechapel Road with London's the, the, at the time it was London's most recent case and they hadn't had one for 47 years of scurvy <laughs> wow I thought you, and I thought beans and toast would be all right for scurvy no vitamin C oh vitamin C vitamin C is scurvy like a vitamin C is which, 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 I wish it, I thought it was fruit and vegetables but oh interesting well, yeah it, it, it's, yeah she was she was the that's smart sauce on it. There's ketchup in it. That's fine. I suspect you need, I suspect the body requires other things. <laughs> yeah. So ah, safety. Hello, hello, mate. He says, uh, hi Paul and James and all. Does it make sense to get uh, to set the FX FX looped preamp at line level to amps return as the parent could like a hot signal? I think it depends on the amp. Very much so. Like, there's certain amplifiers that run really hot, things like Matchless and um, Morgan's. If a box sort of style amps tend to run really hot. I think just run it until you think it sounds good. Yeah. Turn that thing up. Give it some boons. Anthony, he says, uh, PJ, love my Oz. Patrick James Eggle. Yeah. Um, hence why I went to him for a neck first log. Took me four years to find the right telly. And the, and the PJ was it. I don't think about resale. I hate selling gear. Yeah, so do I. I, I hate selling gear, but I, I hate losing money on gear. I, I hate losing money on gear even more than resale. If if I was looking for a, for me, like a guitar, I don't know if I'm going to like a guitar in, in six months' time. Yeah. Like that PRS that I've got there, you can't see it. That one there. That one. That period is a fantastic guitar. It's a fantastic guitar, but am I going to keep it? No. Yeah. So, so to me, that's it's it's if if, if that wasn't a pair, if I didn't get that pair for a good price, I'd I'd I would lose. A, if I bought that new, I'd be losing a hell of a lot of money. Mm. Mike Blue, fifty-eight junior single cut. Yes, very much the yes. That's what I'm talking about. In uh, TV Yellow. Uh, Al says, I'm at the Gibson Garage this Friday and Jared James Nichols is doing a free uh, clinic at 12pm on Saturday. Nice. Jared James Nichols. God. He can play. Talk about one pickup. One pickup guitars. Yeah. He's uh, absolutely amazing. He's massive as well, isn't he? I don't know. Anthony. Yeah, huge. Uh, Anthony says, Repersonus uh, Studio Live. I have the 32 rack, which is at home interface, 11 stereo synth lines, or blah, 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 blah. Two racks setting out the way on the PC screen mixer. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's brilliant. Lee says, Selling gear. The thing that I find really frustrating is the gear gets announced, but you can't buy it anywhere for months on end. The IRX, the new Pod Express, etc. But yes, but yeah. Boss had a couple of issues with um, something. No, the the IR two, you couldn't you couldn't get. Mm. You know, companies do for, forecasting, and a lot of time effort goes into working out what's going to sell and how how much to get the right stuff in the right places. And but sometimes it catches them out. Eleven Rack yeah. was one of those with Avid. They didn't, you know, they sold the first five thousand units in about two and a half hours. Oh, really? Wow. Um, and then all of a sudden, your Chinese manufacturing plant, who've gone on to manufacture the next thing, you can't get a slot for the yeah. next three months. Yeah, yeah. Unless you own your own factory, like Mr. Beringer does. Yeah, 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 very true. Jeff says, I still find it bizarre that we buy stuff based on what we can sell it for. Not always. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I th because... I mean, it's it's probably different for me because you know I, I I do a lot of content and I need to have the the constant flow of new gear coming in. Mm. But there's no way that I'd go and buy a, a brand new something for a certain price and then because I don't know I don't know how long I'm going to keep it for. So I want something that I know that I'm gonna that I'm gonna sell for at least what I paid for it, yeah. or not you know not far off what I paid for it. Finney, hello, mate. He says, I've been out of the loop for a bit. Paul, did you get rid of the Hoover? Go Junior instead of SG. SG has that Elam Gate feel. Yes, I agree, yeah. Um, no, I've still got the uh, the Hoover's there. 
you can just see it there the, there still got it um it's up for sale at the moment uh steve hello mate he says a very late hello rats and fellow vermin it's been a while soz no worries mate you've been busy funk bass joining you guys very late just glad to catch you guys live thanks mate king of the mountain uh hello from nyc thank you for all the content you put out oh thanks mate thank you nice to be appreciated <coughs> hollywood says paul so which guitars do you keep forever or have had for over five years um my telly my squire i should say it's not a telly is so the guitar so that one so there's my telly the the squire mm -hmm. uh the, the blue one so... that you've got that's the only guitar Sorry? that you've got that's the only guitar that you currently have that you had when i met you other than yes. your acoustics yeah yeah absolutely um the blue one's up for sale uh the i'd be stupid to get rid of the, the master belt because that's that's a, a really rare uh one and the black one i'm keep uh, that that's that's a definite keep that's the best strat i've ever played um and the 335 is i would have thought a keeper um i do love your p90 les paul though i must admit that's such a I, I, P90 les paul yeah i don't think i'll ever get rid of that i don't think i'll ever get rid of that because it's 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 really good mm. but it, it doesn't get used much. i mean i'd never use it live because i actually have to lie i have used it live but, you have um, yeah um but yeah i'll look at trap i'll look at trap with it davros hi steve enjoyed your birmingham videos yes they're good aren't they good aren't they Steve, Steve done a really good job with them. Uh, Otto Geddon, Paul, would you go for an SG Junior? Yeah. Yes, I think so. I, I, yes. He said cheers. <laughs> Lee says he's selling that Esquire to me. Everyone loves that Esquire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve said the pink paisley thin line is stunning. Yeah, this is a. I'll, I'll bring it over. It's just in case it would not seen it. It's um, it's uh, a Fender Master built. Was it it's made by? I love that guitar. I can't be. Is it Greg Fessler? I don't know. It's it's. This was the um the Nam. Look at the. You've got to see the checking on that. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the checking on that? It's really interesting. Where they where they've done it. Uh, this was um when greg fessler gave his did his um but well this was his nam 2018 i think or maybe 2019 guitar that was um that, that was his showcase that's it's quite a special one. <laughs> but it's um I, I wish personally I, I wish it was um three single coils Oh, I don't know. I like it. It, noises. it sounds amazing. Yeah, no, it does. It's a really, it's a, it's a great guitar. It still sounds like a Strat as well, which is bizarre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's a really, really good guitar. That. Put that there. There we go. Uh, did you, Funky Bass? Did you guys ever have unfounded prejudice against certain pieces of guitar? I need to realise later how wrong you were. For me it was p bass is showing me yeah for me it was telecasters um i think for me it was acoustics was it <laughs> i just did i wasn't interested there was uh, the idea of having a real piano and, and acoustics in a in a band was just absolutely horrendous for me yeah that that wrong I was. yeah yeah mine was telecaster my first guitar was a strat i had the choice of a strat or a telecaster i didn't get telecaster i thought it was just didn't get it at all. Did not get it until uh, I can't remember. What, I can't remember what guitar I got. I got some sort of Telecaster and just went, "Oh my god, this thing's amazing!" Because it's more like a. To me, a Telecaster is more like a. It's 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 more of a rock guitar than a Strat. It's got it's got way more. <laughs> yeah, it's not, and it's it's been labelled wrong. It's it's way more rock guitar than than a Strat. 
Yeah. Uh, social media, uh, he said, I thought that Nick Hooper was a keeper. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever said it was a keeper, actually. Could be wrong. Maybe I'd, I'd maybe think that, yeah, there's probably a lot of things that I probably would think were, were keepers. And No, it's really, it's a, it's the build quality on that thing is amazing. It's, it's just not, it's not for me. Uh, Jeff, Brock, how many, how many? This is now. I won't need another guitar, so people. <laughs> I don't think. I don't know Dozens. Dozens. I, don't think, I, don't think, I mean, it's different because again, we've got the channel, so it's so it's it's constant sort of new stuff coming in, and I'm, I'm at the stage. Really I'm at the stage where I'm I'm prepared to let some stuff go, just to get rid of it. To go to to go cheap, just to get rid of it. Really? Yeah. It's it's all right at the minute. It's under control, but I need to get the kids' guitars off to their room and get them out of here because that way then yeah. they'll, they'll actually be in their room and they might get played rather than sitting here gathering dust. Yeah, yeah, definitely. David, he says, how many Tonex pedals will go for peanuts when the Tone X2 with F, uh, with effects loop and stereo capabilities come out? Cheers, mates. Enjoy the show. Look forward to it everywhere. Ah, oh, cheers, David. Yeah, definitely. That's I mean that's the same, and that's the thing about digital products. When the next version comes out, that becomes obsolete, isn't it? Mm. Rohit, he says, any thoughts on the new Headrush Core? Can it beat the Fractal FM3? I, th th I definitely don't think it'll beat an FM3. No, I don't think it will. Unless unless they've done a lot of work. To bring it up to up to date, which they probably haven't, because they probably haven't got the resources to do it. Um, yeah, the, the the fractal stuff is is leaps and bounds ahead at the minute. Yeah, Mike Blue, he's he said, is that a jam pedal pink bloke? It is. It's. Ah, it is. I love that thing. <laughs> so good, isn't it? Yeah, it's the um, jam pedals. Um, Dave Gilmore. It's, <laughs> it's got yeah it's got all of the so you can do all the dave gilmore tones on it it's really good mm. it's good so, um i was speaking to jam pedals yesterday i had a i had a meeting with them and um and we're just sort of discussing going out there to do some to do some great. videos and i think it'll be great because basically they do custom ped pedal enclosures these these sort of multi-effects pedals and you can put in any any one of their pedals. You, you can custom you can customize these sort of enclosures, and they'll make you a, a you know any sort of multi effects that you want. Very cool. Yeah, re really great. And the build quality of jam pedals is, and and they're one of the only companies that that uses that, that makes pedals proper through hole components. As opposed yeah. to you know the little components and all that sort of stuff, you know they they're still doing it properly. There's and there aren't many. No. Uh, Rohit says, "Can Fender guitar? Uh, what Fender guitar can you recommend between a thousand to fifteen hundred? A thousand to fifteen hundred what, mate? Um, pounds? If it's pounds, euros, or dollars, it's not far off the same at the minute, is it? Huh?" It's not far off all the same at the minute. Yeah, yeah. So so that's all right. If it's, you know, if it's something... Shekels. That's much slightly different. Was that if it's what? Shekels. Shekels, yeah. Um, I would recommend one of the vintage reissues. So, I'd, And I'd get a Telecaster. I would get a 60s, 60s style telly. And if you can, get it secondhand. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, uh, see, see, Lee's been Lee's doing your favour there. Hundred pounds? No, Lee. <laughs> Mikey said, "Do you remember around twenty to thirty years ago, the quest was for one guitar to do it all? Yeah, even young guys are trying to build collections for multiple guitars. I'm just as guilty as that. Yeah, yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, and, and no one wants that. Do do it all, all the switches on it and stuff. It's just like nah. that's, what, that's what that eggle I've got." was for me it was the it was the best combination of i i could get that did as nut a strat and a les paul in one guitar that was the yeah. ideal that was the ideal that was what we're shooting for 
yeah the dying seagull pedal yes it's got the it's got the seagull effect on it you can you push the button we're there we're done we made it well done everyone for oh. sticking with us. Uh, thank you so much for um for seeing it seeing it through to the bitter end we've we've maintained good numbers tonight which clearly means we've either been entertaining or controversial or both i'm not sure which normally both saying <laughs> stupid things yes we're good at that uh we'll be back next week with more of the same guff um please do keep your emails questions comments coming in uh for the person who said paul can't play um thunderstruck oh, that's, can we just talk about that no it wasn't that it was it was so, <laughs> it's so good it's so good i can't believe this guy made this comment so what, what was it on it was on it was on it was on the youtube video for the um thingy x the phil x three the phil x amp the phil x amp and uh i played thunderstruck and he said thunderstruck is not legato it's picked He obviously hasn't seen many of our videos, is he, where we, we sort of bludgeon our way through playing stuff. It's like if we're doing a video on how to play something, I, I would have got his comment. But what a stupid comment. Yes. That was a stupid comment of the week. It's stupid comment of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we, should do, we should do that. We should do that every week. We, we should do that on the show. We should do the stupid comment of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Paul needs it, to play more progressively. It, it should. We should also just let people know that, quite frankly, we don't care. Um, so, uh, please join us next week for more stupid comments because there will be some, probably from me, many from Paul, and one from somebody else at least. Um, have a great week, everyone. Take care, and we'll see you on the other side. Good night. <laughs>